Hi guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in. I got a customer here that wants me to do rebuild kits for his brake calipers and the master cylinder on 2015 Road Glide. It's a ABS bike and I haven't really seen much videos on that. A lot of people believe that they gotta take it to the dealer because of the ABS module that you couldn't bleed it. Well, this video is kinda coming a little bit as an afterthought because I already did this caliper and the way I did it, I didn't have to worry about going to the dealer, I got it already bled. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the rebuild kit on the other caliper, which means I'm putting all new pistons and uh, the rubber seals inside the caliper, and I also gonna put rebuild kit in the front brake master cylinder. Okay, so first thing I'm doing here, I'm covering the motorcycle, and I open the front brake master cylinder reservoir and make sure it's filled up. Um, the reason why I'm covering everything up because these new bikes they take that for brake fluid and it'll eat up your paint. So be real careful about spilling anything, especially if it would drip on the paint. Be real careful about that. So I gotta. In the next step, guys, what I'm gonna do? Pop this cover off. Take my clip for the that holds the brake pads in, and then there is three six millimeter Allen heads and the five millimeter that holds the brake pads and this brake banjo bolt that holds the brake line. What I need to do here is I need to make sure that I will be able to loosen this up later when I'm holding it in my hand. So I'm gonna take my ratchet and loosen these but tighten them right back up but not really heavy. So I can loosen it again later when I'm just holding it in my hand. Uh, the brake pad bolt I can take out all the way just leave it in there but just loosen it all the way and then uh, the, the next one you need to crack loose and re-tighten is your banjo bolt right here so now I'm pretty certain when I take this off I'm gonna be able to loosen all these bolts when I'm just holding it in my hand I'm gonna... so now with my caliper in the hand I can pull this pin for brake pads and remove the brake pads they just pop right off once this uh, pin is out I need a little help here there you go so these are, they are off and now as you can see here we have our pistons there's four pistons here and to replace them I need to be able to get them out. So what I'm gonna do now is go up to my brake master cylinder and carefully start pumping the brake and watching these cylinders at the same time. Sometimes you might need a help of uh, a second person because it's far apart. I reposition myself and uh, I'm starting to slowly pump the cylinder. You can see these pistons starting to come out. Here, I just wanted to take this uh, moment to show you that I ran a little bit low so that's a very important step. You don't want to introduce any air into the system. So now I'm right back down here again. You can see that these two are out sufficiently for me to be able to, be able to remove them with the pliers once I get this caliper on my table. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert the, the, the brake pad just to s stop it from popping all the way out. And I'm going to stop pumping the, the other side and carefully watching so not I don't want, what you don't want to happen to one of these cylinders to pop all the way out and then you screw it because none of the others will move because you're already leaking brake fluid out so now I'm gonna try to pump a little bit more just trying to be able to show you what's going on here and hold it at the same time Let me show you a little detail with the flashlight. So that I got him out about this much. So I'm gonna leave it there. So now the important part, what I did on the other side that worked for me, is when I loosen this banjo bowl right here, in the moment when you when you take this apart, it's the brake fluid just keeps coming out and you will uh, in in a short time you will lose all your brake fluid that you have and introduce a lot of air into the system. 
So what I did, it, I got myself a 8 millimeter bolt with two washers and a nut. And when I take the banjo bolt off, I try to sandwich this with my bolt and a nut to slow down the, the leak of this brake fluid out of here. So I won't lose all of it while I'm working on my bench on the caliper. So this is what it looks like after I took the banjo bolt out. As soon as you take in that, that bolt, that actually this is the bolt that holds your um, a bleeder bolt on top of it. It's got, make sure you don't lose your washers, uh, the seal washers on it, right there. Uh, I put just a regular bolt with two washers and a nut and I tighten it up so this instead of pouring out it barely drips it, it doesn't seal 100% but it gives me enough time to comfortably work on my bench on the caliper that it's already removed right now and uh, I don't have to worry about losing all my brake fluid and then worry about how am I gonna bleed the system when I got so much air in it again you want to keep an eye on your fluid up here it might be going down slowly as you're working so Take a look at it every once in a while, make sure it stays full. Okay guys, so as you see, um, I like to use these baking trays. You can buy every different size you need. And it's kind of nice because um, all the stuff that leaks out of this, it, it gets captured. And it's a little bit, uh, a little bit less messy. So now I can take my six millimeter, see how I can easily loosen these guys up because I already did that on the bike a little bit. So I can separate these without putting this caliper in the vise and try to find a way to get this loose. And um, separate these two halves. It is a messy job, so if you like to work with rubber gloves, it's recommended. It's definitely a mess. So now you can split the two halves apart. There's a seal right here that it comes in the kit. I can pop this uh, brake pad spring retainer. So now I want to show you this uh, rebuild kit we got. Um, I think it came from JMP Cycles. Um, everything's in there that you need. And um, later, when we do the master cylinder, that one came from the dealer. So now I just I got enough here sticking out. So and plus I'm putting a new pistons in, so I don't have to worry about putting a scratch on these. I'm gonna just kind of twist it this way, back and forth. And it should come right, you see how easily it comes out? Same with the other side. Now this is full of brake fluid, so I'm gonna go dump it, okay? Uh, now I take a pick like this, you can buy in Harbor Freight or most tool stores will have pick. And there's two sets of rubbers in each. The skinny dust one and the thicker one that that seals the unit from leaking fluid out same with the other one there was really nothing wrong with these brakes um, the customer just wanted to have them rebuilt so uh, it's really not no defects here on the original stuff but he's got high miles and he doesn't want to wait until it messes up so now I'm going to open my rebuild kit here. So the rebuild kit will come with everything you need, which means you're going to get four pistons, all the rubbers, including the small seal that, that seals the two half of the calipers together. So actually I'm going to put these old seals away so I don't mix new and old and I'm just gonna pull out of the bag what I need right now 
two thicker ones and the two thin ones so um, I, I like to use a little bit of the brake fluid and just, just kind of get it, all of this wet coated up with the brake fluid so you're not putting nothing in dry and then these don't matter which way you put them so you just you just start popping this in it goes in just as easy as you can see here just make sure everything is lined up inspected you don't have no nothing twisted nice and straight you can see same with the other side As I told you, it's a messy job, so if you don't want to get your hands all covered in brake fluid. See, this one is twisted right now a little bit, so usually just stick your nail or something in there, it'll, it'll line right back up. So inspect it real good before you start putting the pistons in, make sure everything is seated nicely. Just kind of get it started there. We go back and forth. It should be you should be able to put it in by hand. There it is, went all the way in. Same with the other side. What you can also use is like a handle of the the hammer and push down on it. This way it gives you a little bit more rev. There you go. So I got both of them in. I don't really need to push them all the way in flush. Clean this up from uh, all the excess brake fluid that got spilled on it. I'm gonna clean the bike after the job is done. It's really important to clean the the bike real good, although brake fluid from everything because I'm gonna put this uh, retainer back on already if you don't remember which way this was just look where your your um, brake pad bolt goes and that's where this goes so you know if you if you try to put it this way that would be this way would be the wrong way so it's got to go this way so this this hump it's right where the bolt will go so we can already kind of put this one where it goes okay guys I just finished the other half so the only thing left over is this uh, seal that goes between the two halves it will just pop off easily like that it's only really one way you can put it in. Make sure it's seated nicely. And clean, make sure all these surfaces are nice and clean. There's no debris of any kind on it. Same on the other side. Now we can put these two halves together. get the bolts these three bolts are identical so there's no really question where they go again I'm gonna tighten this just as much as I can get it tight in my hands that's enough and next is the brake pads Okay, his brake pads were replaced recently, so you don't have to put new ones now. Again, there's only one way to put these guys in, really, so shouldn't be a big deal. Push him in a little bit here, put the bolt in here. the five millimeter again tighten it as much as you can by just holding it and now we got the the clip that just goes at the edge over here like this 
okay so this caliper now is ready to go back in so let's do that okay guys so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna loosen up these two pinch bolt the bolt and the nut and put on my caliper with the original bleeder bolt I gotta work fast because as soon as I loosen this up I'm gonna have um, fast drip here so I really don't want to run out of fluid um, so you see how quickly this is dripping so I'm gonna put my banjo bolt the seal washer try to work fast here like I said it's a mess so gloves are recommended and then uh, tighten this on with the half inch so now this is tight so there's no more leaking I'm gonna wipe this down but I have air in this caliper so now I'm gonna have to bleed it but before I do that I try to clean all the excess brake fluid that dripped on it all over the place and uh, put this caliper and, on the uh, bike now the last step is to bleed this brake so I'm gonna check on top make sure that I have enough fluid in the master cylinder tighten this banjo bolt real good okay and with the 3 8 I can start bleeding this okay guys so I got my 3 8 wrench here I put a clear hose on the top of it so I can see the bubbles coming out and I got my uh, baking tray underneath to catch up all the fluid that's going to be coming out of this hose eventually. You, what you want to do is pump the lever two, three times and loosen and tighten this bolt. So I made sure my reservoir is full. I'm going to pump this slowly and loosen up. I can hear the air. I can't see the bubbles since where I'm at, but again, pumping two, three times slowly and the fluid is coming out and you repeat this process take your time there's no no need to pump fast you need to keep checking your reservoir make sure you're not going to run out of brake fluid up on top I can already feel I'm getting my lever back so I think I'm pretty close to be already good now the reservoir so this is it guys uh, the key in being successful in doing this this way it's not to lose the fluid that you have already in your system so if you only got to get the air from here you're not introducing any air any further away because when you do each individual one at a time and and you bleed each individual one when you're done with it you should be fine the last important step I need to do down here is make sure that all these bolts are properly tightened up because I only did it in my hand so all these these three mainly so you want to make sure they they're nice and tight This one was tight enough just by hand, but I mean on my table. And the next thing I got is I just got a soapy water because there's so much brake fluid all over everything. I, I try, I'm gonna wash this bike with the greaser outside when I'm done, but I don't like to keep the brake fluid sitting on it. You the, so what I got a nice uh, firm lever. So if I didn't wanna do the master cylinder, I would've been able to call this job finished because I got both front brake calipers rebuilt with all new guts but what I'm gonna do now is a little bit easier up here I'm gonna just disconnect this line not worry about it because this is way up this is not gonna leak anywhere this is the highest point on the bike so I can just wrap it with paper towel and let this sit and then take this a master cylinder off and put it on my table and put a rebuild kit in it okay guys so next thing i'm gonna go do i'm gonna loosen up my uh banjo bolt here just crack it loose 
and then get my clamp loose so I can remove this master cylinder. I'm just going to put a paper towel kind of tightly inside and just let it rest like this. The towels are very important because the, there was already some drippage so the towels will catch it, it won't be on the bike, it won't ruin the paint. Here we go again with our uh, tray. I already dumped the brake fluid out of it. Here's the, the part number and the rebuild kit that you can buy from the Harley dealer. It comes with the the piston, everything has to pre assemble it with the, the clip. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the lever off. Just like that. You pull the pin out. push the lever out so this will be the dust seal I take something sharp and just get to the edge of it without messing up I'm surprised that the rebuild kit doesn't come with it so we need to reuse this dust cover so it's not too bad just carefully uh, pipe pry it off see it's in good shape nothing happened to it so now to take the rest of it off, we gotta take a clip over here. It looks just like this one. We can use uh, pliers. Sometimes helps when you push the piston down. So here's our old one. You want to inspect the interior. This looks all good. Like I said, this whole job is kind of pre preventative job. The customer rides a lot, long distance out of out of state. Just wants to make sure he's gonna have no problems. So again, new one in. this down with the screwdriver to get a little more space okay guys so I got this uh, clip back in that's the important thing I want to show you there's actually two grooves over here the first groove is for that rubber dust seal right here so this clip has to go all the way down to the second groove it's easier if you push the cylinder down out of the way because it won't let you squeeze the clip because this is in the way uh, it's better to do it in some kind of uh, crimping device or something. Be careful not to scratch this up. But um, for the purpose of the video, I did it like this on a table to show you. So now I got this piece to go put back in. There's still enough OEM grease in here. I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, you just lightly push this dust seal back in and it'll pop into that uh, other groove that is right on top. And so I have this uh, apart. It's a good time to loop this up. Pretty straightforward. This clip usually just pops back in with the screwdriver or some it's there's so little sometimes find easier to use a screwdriver just like that okay
Hey guys, so we are back here at the bike. I'm gonna move this out of the way and put my master cylinder back on. And again, the next important part and the reason why we really don't need to do a special tools or worry about bleeding the ABS unit is that we're gonna pre bleed this master cylinder first so I, I got my my banjo bolt and the washer ready this is still open like it was and I'm gonna cover this with cover the opening here with my finger let me show you I'm just gonna cover this hole where you're putting your banjo bolt with my finger and I'm gonna bleed it just like I would be bleeding a brake so I'm gonna pump it up two three times let go pump it up two three times let go until the brake fluid keeps uh, coming off and I know I got the master cylinder pretty much bled so it, it takes no time at all see I already got I already got fluid coming out so I'm gonna keep my finger on it I'm gonna put the bolt and both washers back on the on the banjo and quickly try to get it on it up and now I still have air in the system but most of the air that that got introduced by having this piston inside empty it's already gone so now I can put some paper towel here or rag and I'm gonna bleed the brake a little more probably two three times is all I gotta do I can hear the air coming out. And I already got my lever back. So this is how fast I was able to bleed this uh, brake up here. So here just to show you after bleeding this couple more times I got perfect lever. This is as far as I can pull it. So it's just like it was before. I got no air in the system. Everything works fine. You're gonna, you don't see any bubbles coming out or anything. Um, so I'm going to top the cylinder off with the brake fluid. Close everything up. Okay guys, so this is it for today. I hope this answered some of your questions. I wasn't sure myself if I'm going to be able to bleed these brakes out. But I'm pretty happy about the result. Um, anyway, please subscribe. It will help me out tremendously. Um, I like to do these videos. But... With every subscription you guys give me and every feedback, I feel more encouraged to do that. So I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.